AI is flashy, but here's the hard truth. 80% of AI projects failed to get off the ground. And the real reason isn't the bottles, it is the data. That is where you, as the data engineer, comes in. Today, I'm going to show you five steps that you can take to become a 10x data engineer, the MVP who makes AI actually work at your company. And I'm going to give you practice activities, 10x level up challenges, and extra resources to help you master each and every step. Let's jump right in. Step one, own the data ingestion pipeline. The first step here is to own ingestion and cleaning. Your actionable step, build robust pipelines that can handle multiple formats. CSV, JSON, Parquet, APIs, even IoT streams. Don't just move data, validate it, enrich it, monitor it. Do this practice activity. Pull data from a public API like OpenWeather or Reddit, or even Marvel if you're a nerdy like me. Clean it, land it in a cloud data lake, add validation so that it flags duplicates or bad formats. The takeaway here, garbage in is garbage out. By mastering ingestion and cleaning, you make sure that your company's AI is always fueled with clean, reliable data. Your 10X level up activity, use an AI coding assistant like Claude Code, ChatGPT, or Copilot. Or if you're lucky enough to be in Databricks, be sure that you use the genie that's in Databricks. That way you can generate a starter script that pulls that API data, and then you could take that and quickly refine it to fit your needs. The real skill isn't typing, it is guiding the AI and correcting it. How this makes you 10X. No human can type as fast as AI can output, but when you learn to prompt and refine AI, you become the engineer who delivers faster, cleaner pipelines than anybody else. For some extra help and for a deep dive, check out The Fundamentals of Data Engineering by Joe Rice and Matt Housley. Second step is to architect smart storage. Your actionable step here, move beyond dumping the data into S3 and Azure. Learn to set up partitioning, clustering, caching, use Parquet and Delta formats to optimize storage Use liquid clustering, again, if you're lucky enough to be in Databricks. Your practice activity, take a data set between 10 and 50 gig, store it in Parquet, run queries with and without partitioning. Benchmark those differences in speed and cost. Takeaway here, the engineer who optimizes storage doesn't just save time, you are saving money that the company didn't have before. And leadership takes notice. Your 10x level up activity for this one, use AI to generate synthetic data sets that mimic enterprise scale data. Ask AI to suggest partitioning strategies and then test them against your own thoughts of how you might do that. How this makes you 10x, you stop guessing and start knowing which strategies cut cost and improve performance. That makes you the engineer that leadership trusts with scale. Here's the extra help piece. For mastering large-scale system design, read the Designing Data Intensive Applications book by Martin Kleppman. The third step is to master feature engineering. Your actionable step here, translate raw fields into model-ready signals, embeddings, normalized time series, categorical encodings. This is where raw data becomes intelligent. One of the best pieces of advice that I got early on was from one of my favorite leaders, Mo, being able to categorize things and put things into buckets is one of the most powerful analytics and data tools that you can have at your arsenal. If you could do that and master the categorical encodings, then you will master your way into the leadership positions. Practice activity here, grab a Kaggle data set like Titanic or Movie Lens. I hate Titanic, but it's out there. Use it. Again, I really like the Marvel API data set. Go out, use that. There's also a Rick and Morty one if you want to do something off the beating path. Engineer at least three new features that boost model accuracy. And then compare your models before and after and see what those efficiency gains are and where you're going with your models. Takeaway here, models are only as good as their features. When you master feature engineering, you don't just support AI, you accelerate it. Your 10x level up activity, use AI to brainstorm engineer feature ideas for your data set, then test them out. 
let AI do the ideation while you deliver the implementation that moves that accuracy needle. How this makes you 10x. Instead of wasting weeks guessing at features, you fast track the process, delivering higher accuracy in less time. For some extra help, you could use this guided practice. Check out the Udemy course, Feature Engineering for Machine Learning. The fourth step is to champion governance and ethics. This is a big one. Your actionable step here, set up role-based access. Mask sensitive fields like PII. Track data lineage, lead bias detection and compliance checks. Your practice activity, pick a data set with mock PII like healthcare or HR data. Apply anonymization with hashing and tokenization, and then write a short compliance note describing how it meets privacy standards and the steps that you took to do that. Your takeaway here is AI projects rarely fail because of bad models. Just like I mentioned at the beginning, they fail because governance and compliance issues stand in their way. When you lead governance, you stop being seen as a coder and start becoming a trusted advisor to the business. Your 10x level up activity here is use AI to help you scan data sets for sensitive fields, names, addresses, IDs. Then ask AI to draft a starter compliance policy or bias audit report that you could take and refine. Again, Genie is built into Databricks, so it's something that you could use and feel safe about exposing your company's data to it, but make sure that you are safe with AI. Don't just expose your company's data to public AIs. Be sure that you have private on-prem possibly AIs that you're using. This is how doing this makes you a 10x data engineer. Most engineers avoid governance. When you embrace it you and automate the grunt work, you become the engineer that your executives lean on for risk management. For extra help, you could use the frameworks and practices in data governance by John. Fifth and final step is to align your pipelines with business outcomes. Your actionable step here, translate technical improvements into real business impact, show reduced costs, faster insights, or improved accuracy. Practice activity for this one is take one of your existing pipelines measure your cost now and then refactor it and add in some optimization and then remeasure the cost of running that pipeline see what the differences are document those differences use that in your next review and then build a simple dashboard in power bi or tableau that highlights those savings that you are starting to gain as you're refactoring some of the code that you're learning to refactor with better optimization techniques the takeaway here, when you connect your pipelines to ROI, you're not just supporting AI. You are driving company strategy. Your 10X level up activity, use AI to rewrite some of your technical notes into executive summaries. For example, ask AI to do something like explain this pipeline optimization in business terms for my leadership. Then use that output in your dashboard and reporting and again, in your next merit increase. How this makes you 10X. You stop being the engineer behind the curtain that can't talk the business lingo. You become the engineer that translates that tech into business value, and that is the fast track to MVP and leadership status. You're for extra help and to sharpen your communication, grab Storytelling with Data by Cole, I can't pronounce his last name, and uh, links down in the comments. These five steps, ingestion, storage, feature engineering, governance, and ROI are your playbook to go from pipeline plumber to AI MVP. If you put in the reps with these activities and challenges, you won't just ride the AI waves, you are going to lead it. The biggest mistake I see is treating AI like a science project without governance or business outcomes. Don't build pipelines that nobody trusts and nobody uses. And if you're ready to become the MVP of your company's AI project, go ahead and jump into this video that talks about how to use Databricks efficiently and effectively.